you'll never give up. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. It's not easy. Keep working. Keep striving. Never give up. Fall down seven times. Get up eight. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. See you at work. Frankie Rob, how you doing, man? Man, you know everything smooth here, brother. What's going on with you and the fam? Man, everything good. Man, everything good. My wife them just came back from uh, Disney World, man. I had to stay and do some work, but uh, everything good, man. Everything's real good, man. Um, one of the big things I want to talk about, just starting everything off, was uh, let's go ahead and remind the Daddy's Bob Podcast fans to continue to have comments and follow us on Twitter at uh, podcast underscore Daddy. We need we need that following feedback. We need information on like what kind of interviews you want, what topics. You know, we just did track and field. You know, we can move on into softball, volleyball. You know, swimming, anything. Olympics coming up. You know, all that kind of stuff. But we need feedback from our fans to know, hey, what's the next direction we should go? Absolutely, bro. Just let us know, like, if you got any questions, whether it comes to recruiting, when it comes to schools, how to choose one, what you're thinking about. Anything got to do with the recruiting process, whether they're in school, uh, in high school, getting ready to go to college, or whether they're in college looking at, you know, different schools to go to, they give you the whole avenues of what the best place to go and things to do based on what we've learned via conversations with other coaches and stuff like that, you know? With no further delay, let's get into this podcast today. We got a very special guest today. We got Jadaryl Kite, Coach Jadaryl Kite, uh, actually from Jacksonville. Jadaryl, how you doing? How y'all doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, man. Up here in the heat wave in Richmond, Virginia right now. Okay. All right. Thanks, for so, for so, man. That's awesome, man. It's glad uh, glad to have you on the podcast, man. We want to do this podcast for a long time. You know, Golden Eye Scouts. I mean, that's some big-time stuff you're doing uh, up there in Richmond, Virginia. And you, I mean, you're just helping people nationally to get to school, man. That's That's got to be a big blessing for you. Yeah, man, it's been pretty big, man. It's, been, it's really getting pretty big, and it's, the sky's the limit of what's going on. True. You know, this thing started off with, um, you know, just helping family members and helping um, guys from back home, uh, back in Jacksonville, Florida, actually, get in school and then somehow word of mouth, man, it's, it's, it's going to get pretty big, man. So how long did, you, did it take you to, like, kind of get established, though? I know you said you help people out in Jacksonville, which is a lot of people to help, but how long did it take you to get established? Yeah. Um, actually, man, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, like, on the ground, nobody really knew. Um, like I said, it, it, it was usually, you know, helping one or two guys, uh, a family member call me and tell me about. And um, this was way before Twitter, uh, the social media. Mm. Uh, you know, just helping one or two guys per year. And, you know, I was only doing this for about maybe two months out of the year, you know, right right close to signing day. You know, did somebody give me a call and say such and such, need some help. And, um, you know, I would, uh, this was before social media and Twitter and all that, so I would have to email coaches, people's film, tell them and buy them and, um, Hope to get some feedback, and and that 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 process worked for me. You know, just helping a few guys a year, and you fast forward to now. Um, I got on Twitter about two years ago, mm. and um, I mm -hmm. was helping just helping a few kids. You know, get in school. The same thing I've been doing for years, and uh, somehow, some way, um, you know, word of mouth spreads like a wild side, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it, went, it, it went from two kids to five kids, you know, until this past year, man, I was dealing with over 300 kids 
and we end up, well, I, me and the help of, you know, others was able to get about 130 shares in school last, last year. So it's definitely, definitely, um, you know, I didn't anticipate helping this many kids, but it seems to be a gift. So I can pretty much, I can, you know, helping. It's a blessing to be able to help others get, get this done now. That's awesome. So tell us yes, a little. Sir. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, man. I, you know, I'm from the north side of Jacksonville, man. I grew up. So five. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, man, I, I've been football was my first love, man. My my older brothers played at North Jack. I learned how to walk at their football practice. <laughs> uh, you know, I always had a ball in my hand. And my mom, you know, she she she's into sports. My dad was a standout at Stanton and Edward Warden. So it was in my blood. Okay. You know, that football. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, um, I, I played at Reigns High School. I graduated in 97. Um, played with a lot of talent. Of course, the year after I graduated, they, they got a new coach and won the state championship. Okay. That was great. Okay. But, uh, but definitely, um, I moved on to uh, the Homer Community College from Reigns in uh, Mississippi. And I uh, moved on from um, the Homer Community College over to Grossmont College in San Diego. And then I played at Langston University, uh, my small HBCU in Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how did you get, you know, how did you get, all right, so you started off helping out just people from Jacksonville. How did you get, these, right. how did you get these colleges to trust you? Like, how did you, how, how, how does that process start? Because, like, it's hard for me just to get a coach just to answer the phone. I know I'm, I, I know I ain't nobody, but, like, how did you get it? Indeed, man. Um, years of doing this and building relationships helped, but Twitter was the amazing platform that helped me. Um, coaches don't like a lot of recruiting company type guys. They don't like that stuff I didn't like. Yeah, I'm just being real, you know. You know, I, I figured you don't need that, you know. Your talent, you know, can speak for itself. But you know, some kids don't know how to sell themselves. Um, some parents don't know about the recruiting process. So I was able to use my real life experience because I, I don't been, you know, the JUCO route. I don't been through it all. You know, the, the last chance you, I lived that life that those kids are living now. So I'm able to go back and have conversations with kids to prepare them for that, that they have to go that route. And, um, but to, to get the coaches here, what I basically just, it was the product. The kids were talented. Um, I was telling the truth on post on, on the scouting report on what the kids can do. And, and, you know, that, that, that helped open the uh, coaches ear. Now I don't have every coach in the uh, country's ear, but I, it's a large amount that, that's reaching out to me just to say thanks, man, because I'm, I'm actually helping them, you know, find some good players in the country right now. Mm -hmm. What it is is that, um, especially like I got from you, I know you uh, start off helping, you know, local kids here from your community and from the city of Jacksonville, but, and you think that Twitter, Twitter really, like, you know, you blew up on Twitter, right? So yes, if sir. a kid is looking to use your services, what is things they need to have in place? Like, you know, make sure that, like, like being like grades got to be this way, you got to have this, or got the film that you have got to be something that's credible film, or like right. what do you need for you to help somebody get to a college, no matter what college it is, but how can you, like what do you need for them to be assisted? Yeah, what I do is I get the kids hard of film, um, I get mm -hmm. their height, I get the weight, um, I try to get an unofficial um, review of their grades um, so I know if they're eligible or not, because I deal with everything from JUCO to prep school to Division three, Division two, NAIA, Division one, and um, I do have some some FBS coaches that check in, but you, we all know um, FBS don't need too much help with mm -hmm. recruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, I do get I can't spit no names, but I do get FBS checking in here and there for players. But um, just um, that information, I'm able to review their film and, and break it down. Um, I got a good eye of what I think level. You know, I give my opinion on what level I think they can play, and um, I pretty much go from there, man. So, question: What what is 
NCA approved. So I see you say that, and like I, I, I was leery of this whole thing. Also, you know, I, I, I'm trying to, trying to help my my other son out with getting recruited. But like I see you say NCA approved on your website. What does that mean? Yes, sir. In order to have um, scouting service, you have to be certified through the NCAA. Um, you pretty much fill out an application. Um, they're going to check out your website. They're going to check out um, your testimonies from people um, who you've dealt with. They're going to pretty much um, comb, comb, you know, because um, what happens is with NCAA scouting, um, you can either – one, you can charge kids for your service, or two, you can charge institutions for your scouting list. Mm-hmm. And um, now I'm NCAA approved. Um, I'm going to be. I, I don't want to charge a kid a dime for my service. I never have. Uh, right now, I'm set up on my my website has small fees on it. Mm-hmm. But um, what we're going to be doing is um, turning this thing into a scouting list. Agencies as well. We're getting all this information over to the schools, and the schools are paying for the subscription. Oh, uh, what, what does all that mean? The different services that you can provide to a kid. Yeah, pretty much what, what I've been doing. Um, I send out invitations to kids who I like, and uh, you know, I get them to sign up. You know, for free. I, I need their information. The coaches need their information, and so we'll get all their official information as far as their uh, their test scores, the transcripts. Everything, and we we get them evaluated. And I get them gold, and I certified. That means I know everything that I'm giving you to this institution is verified. It's their height, their weight, their, their test scores, and their official transcript. And um, the promotional things um, on there are, are pretty much uh, as far as what I've been doing on Twitter. Because that's how a lot of kids have been able to get out through my service. Okay, I have all over. I have a, I don't know how approximately how many but I got a, a, a ton of followers right now of coaches mm-hmm. on Twitter and uh, they're looking for talent man I'm able to help them get their foot in the door and get on that recruiting board if they, if they, you know if they talent pan out is that what that coach is looking for they definitely getting a good look um, off my page on Twitter so uh, that, that's pretty much what the promotion thing is the, the full consultant package um, we help kids with the um, Scheduling of unofficial visits to campuses. Mm-hmm. Um, we help them with um, ACT, SAT prep. Okay. Um, uh, um, the promotions in there as well, and pretty much email. We you know have emails to every single college in the country. Coaches don't. It's hard to get a coach to send it through email, especially from a recruiting service. Like I said. I know for a fact that coaches don't like recruiting, sir. Mm-hmm. But um, when you when you get them guys over uh, and you build relationships with them, I've been able to build relations with them um, through uh, social media and uh, pretty much from personal. A lot of these guys I know from when I played ball with, um, friends of friends and um, stuff like that. So they know who I am. They know I ain't going to tell them nothing that's not – you know, true. So, um, I've been able to build a good reputation with these coaches. So, if, if you can play, they're looking for what I have. I can definitely help. That's that's uh, that's that's awesome, man. Absolutely. That's awesome. So, uh, man, you talked a couple weeks back uh, about yeah. you know this JUCO situation. Since last chance you came out, I haven't seen this yet. Been busy. Been a busy weekend. Yeah. But. Um, you had a long conversation about JUCO, man, and you know all about it, man. So, like, give us your opinion, yep. opinion of the JUCO process right now and how, you know, it's just a harder process than, than, than uh, NAIA, D1, D2, and D3. Oh, yeah. The JUCO process is no joke. I can pr- pretty much tell you all, everything about the JUCO process, man, because um, I've been through that. And um, right now, man, you no. Know, Kids and, and parents got to understand, you know, what happens with that. If, if you, of course, you want to qualify and get the way you're going, you know, to university. But, you know, that's not going to happen all the time. So with JUCO, it's a second chance, man. Um, but you got to have talent. It's very competitive. People think because it's JUCO, it's not, you know, it's not D1. 
Uh, it's not this, but I'm trying to tell you, man, especially in Mississippi and Kansas. Um, it's way really more competitive, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, man. Just think about how many good kids that you know were really good that didn't have grades. Mm-hmm. Across mm-hmm. all of those kids are in one league. And um, with last chance, you, that put a spotlight on Juco football. And kids didn't know about that before. You know, a lot of kids didn't know about those schools. So now you got kids who are already enrolled at FBS schools calling them. You know, because, uh, you know, maybe their situation ain't going right at the FBS. Uh, maybe they're the backup and they want to start. Those guys are calling JUCOs now to get another opportunity. Like um, on, on this mm-hmm. season four of uh, last chance, you, the quarterbacks from Georgia Tech on Independence College team, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, you are. Yeah, these guys, man, and the, the, the roster is full of those guys. Um, kids think that they can walk in there and play right away, but you got a season vet in front of them. Mm hmm. <laughs> so if you're not that dude right now, it's going to be a process for you in development. And, you know, we lose a lot of kids like that because they go to JUCO, they don't play right away, they get discouraged. Uh, some of them get cut because it's roster limit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And <clears throat> that 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 be the end of it a lot of times, but... What I get, man, I get everything under the moon um, on my DMs, man, and I try to help as many as I can. Um, I get the kids that that, that don't went to JUCO and, and is in that situation and looking for another place to go. Um, I get kids that's at, you know, um, our, our FBS, our FBS that's, uh, that may, may have uh, um, gotten – didn't get a 2.0, so he got to move on somewhere. So I help them guys get placed. JUCO is it, my number one tool right now as far as placement because I'm getting more of those kids who are looking to go to JUCO. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah it, it's very competitive out there, man. Yeah, it, it, it is, man. Like, let's talk about some of the things that uh, the kids get in trouble to with in JUCO. Because this is my, my issue is this. My issue is these mm-hmm. kids go to JUCO, and they tra- they go to like three or four, not three or four, but like three JUCOs, no lie. They go to like three JUCOs because of the same problems they had in high school. They just don't understand. When you go, yeah. when you go to JUCO, you are a grown man. You are on your own. So, you know, one of the biggest things I want to talk about was, you know, the weed problem. You know, most of them can't stop smoking weed. You know, that that's a big, big deal. You know what I'm saying? That's a big deal because that's that's one of the things that gets you kicked out of JUCO. And then the next thing is just your grades, just not, not being serious about your grades because it's all up to you. Right. It's all up to you. And it, it's so many pe- the kids transferring every semester or getting kicked out every semester because of drugs and, and grades. You know you know about those yeah. experiences? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's, it's, it's almost the, the culture. Even when I was in school, uh, you know, back in 97, 98, early 2000, I mean, the whole dorm smelled like weed. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, man, when I got to Langston University, my whole, our homecoming, our whole pregame speech and halftime speech was about weed, black and miles, and alcohol. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, that's that's been the culture, man, for a long time. I mean it it, it is what it is. You know, it, it ain't nothing that's that's new, but that's definitely happening. Um our coach used to have our piss test I mean, you know, urine test for guys, uh randomly. So that's been going on ever since I, I ever since I, I even I, you know, I went to Rain High School. Oh yeah. So what I was saying was that, man, and he totally right about that, you know, um, when it comes to substance abuse, you know, it, it may sound like, you know, that's crazy because I was one of the kids that were, you know, smoke weed every day, all day, four or five blunts a day. That's just who I am, you know what I'm saying? But in the same sense, what I, when I joined the military, I had to learn is that is the weed more important than my finances? Mm. Is the weed more important than my future? I can tell you this. The opportunity that you may have right now won't be there in 10 years, but we will still be here in 10 years. Yes. So 
why not get it completed first? And even in last chance, you this 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 series right now, we got kids getting kicked off of weed. Every year the same situation goes on, but it's like when will the the, the boys or girls understand the process is not forever. This this college process is not for the rest of your life. Mm-mm. But I guarantee you this, not saying that I'm not condoning marijuana smoke, I'm not condoning anything of that nature, but I can tell you this, when you get done playing football, we will still be here, but the opportunities will not be here for the rest of your life. Once you look at what's the biggest situation right now, whether it's getting high, laughing, eating all the food, or, you know what I'm saying, getting the, getting the education, getting the money, going to the pros, or whatever you're going to do with your life. That should be the priority for you and your family, you know what I'm saying? The kid that figures that out, that's the kid that makes it. Yeah, and that's the thing about it. We try, right about that. We try to, we try to get them to figure it out at an earlier age. And that's my thing about like yeah. the education system. I, I don't like it because uh, it doesn't it doesn't prepare the kids for a lot of things they deal with in life. It's a lot of ways to deal with certain different things, but it's they don't really even talk about it like that, you know. And uh, yeah. coach, so what happens when you send a kid under your scouting service? And he's just a total, complete, you know, what's the word, man? How can it be nice, man? Ninka poop, man. You know, he just, hey, he just wilding. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what happens when they do that? Because, like, I know for me, the little things I do, I get ridiculed a lot yeah. because I help people out that I already make mistakes and they can make my name bad so I can't help somebody else out. So, is that the same thing that happens in your in the scouting service world or how does that work? It, it definitely can damage your reputation. Um, with me, this is my first year on the Golden Eye Scouts. It has been just my, just me, period. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The year, this is, my, this is my first year on the Golden Eye Scouts, but that definitely, it, it'll be hard to go back to that same coach and get another kid fit to me. So have you, so you have had that before? Um, yeah, I've had a kid go and, and play, play great. You know, he did great. You know, he did what I said he can do, but I've had some kids, you know, not do well in class, get sent home. Um, I've had some guys get caught smoking weed and get sent home. Um, stuff like that, man, because once you start dealing with a large number of people, you're going to have some, some issues like that. Yeah, that's true. I, I guess that's true. That's true. So what what do you yeah. do? What do you do? To, do you notice that? And, and, and do you take a look at that before you, you put that stamp, that golden eye stamp on them? Or... Do you, do you, I mean, do you? Definitely, definitely because uh, what I do, man, is um, first thing I do when a kid contacts me, contacts me, I get the information down. I try to get a hold of that head coach. Okay. And I, I try to get a hold of somebody that knows the kid that, that I, that I trust word, that word. Um, just try to get a hold of as many people as I can to get. Get a better feel of who that young man is and what their opinion of, or the, mm-hmm. of the young man. But they know him. I, I, I just met 30 seconds ago. Mm-hmm. Um, what can you tell me about him? I mean, you know, and, and I try to go from there, but I get, I get, man, I get kids, man, um, that's looking for a second chance more than anything. Um, like, okay. I can't say, can't say names, but, um, I had, I, I had, about four or five kids that were P5, you know, Power 5 guys that played at Power 5 who that, that had a little incident. And some sometimes they wasn't even uh, guilty. But, you know, they, if you Google their name, the press don't already smear it. They wreck their name. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had to, um, you know, pretty much help those guys, get you know, get in school or uh, get a second chance. Um, I've, I've talked, you know, I've been on the phone with lawyers. Um, I've been on the phone right before uh, coaches and uh, institutions have had, have had hearings about certain guys to try to, to see if they can get a kid second chances. So I get, I get all those cases, man. But the JUCO, the, the Power 5 kid that got in trouble, they all they get in contact with me. Uh, somebody will uh, tell me about the kid. I'm, I'm the guy that's gonna try to help, pretty much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They. Uh, the thing. The thing about it is, um, that the same thing that happens at JUCO. It happens at the Division One. Same thing. It's just they. Don't, they oh. keep it. They keep it under wraps. They keep it under wraps. A lot of that stuff they keep under wraps until they they kicking you out. 
you know. But it, but some of those things happened, definitely happened to Division One. At least at the, the episodes I seen, it, it happened at Division One. It, it happened on this episode too as well, Randy. But you know what? It, it's a blessing that you are to these kids that you know we don't have no other source because I feel like this way. If God forbid my son was getting anything like that. I wouldn't know what to do with him. I'm gonna call one of y'all. You know what I'm saying? And I also can give you give a testament or be a testimony to what you do, man. Because we talked previously about certain kids here in Jacksonville that I love and want them to do something with themselves. And you already contacted them, or they contacted you, and I got nothing but the best reviews from them about you. You know? And it was like, man, he the best guy, man. He he. He, he always kept his appointment times up there. He said he would call me. He called me. If, if even if I didn't call him or, and didn't look back on him, he still looked to me. Still called me, saying, "Hey, what's going on with this? What's going on with that?" Help these boys get out these streets, man. And that's a you're a blessing, man. So keep on doing what you're doing, man. For real, man. That's a very good, it's a very good thing you got going on there. And if I could be help any kind of way, you know you got me. I'm on your team, brother. Uh, uh, I appreciate that, bro. Are most of your, your schools that you have connections with, are they most like East Coast, Central, or something like that? Do you, do you, are you very strong on the West Coast? Man, that's crazy. That's the crazy thing about it is it's, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to hear from programs I had no idea about that I, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm learning now. Like I, I, I don't know if I can say these school names, but you know, I, I got – People in Central Washington, you know that part of the world, mm-hmm. um, place North Dakota, places in South Dakota, places in Minnesota. I mean, building relationships with these guys, man. And and let me tell you what 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 my my biggest my biggest issue is right now, though. Um, my biggest issue right now is like I'm I'm finding a lot of kids opportunities to play ball, and it's not. A power five, a division one school, and they'll brush it. They'll brush the coaches off, man. That's crazy. Wow. They won't, yeah, they won't talk to them. Or they won't. They won't uh, return text. And and you know, out of the hundred and some kids that we sent to school, we've had probably that same amount that decided that not to play anymore because they didn't get the offer that they want. So you say you got kids what? that's not playing football yep. because they didn't get the offer they wanted. Oh, yeah. Kids, it, it, it's either the kids or the parents, it, either the school was too far for them or it wasn't a, 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 a Division One school or a school that they, they felt comfortable with signing with. But I'm getting a lot of that from, you know, the kids that they want to go D1, they want to go D1. But I've even had a kid... I can't say the school name turned down a, a, a great um, institution, a D2, HBCU in the South, in Atlanta, because they were D2, and he's walking on from Yeah, I had that too. I had, I had, I had a kid. Yeah. I, had, wow. I had a kid turn down uh, uh, a local school in this area for mm-hmm. a walk on somewhere. So he, he gonna pay money to walk on and he had a full scholarship at, yeah. at a local school. I mean I guess that's his, their yeah. that's their prerogative. But what what yeah. but, but what did you, what did we do all this we did for? What did we pay Pop Warner in high school? We we trying to get a free education. And then at the same time that walk on is gonna be so much harder than a school that's giving you giving you a scholarship and the things that you can get from it. And le- and then your your opportunity to get on the field at the school with the scholarship gonna be better than the school you're gonna walk on. I understand people think their value is is so great, but sometimes you gotta understand it's a stepping stone. You don't have to stay at a local school forever. That school that gave you that full off that full ride or whatever, you can go there after a, a couple of years graduate and then move on to something else, you know? And Brand Brand, you know good well pride is one of the biggest things that holds you back in life. And sometimes kids don't want to be accountable for the lack of work they put in or the lack of education that they have. Mm-hmm. And so you get an offer somewhere that wasn't like, 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 like somebody told me, there's no kids that go to bed at night and wake up in the morning saying, you know what, I want to go to an HBCU. I want to go to a school like this, you know what I'm saying, a D2 school. But reality is, this may be where you need to stay, start right here to make you feel accountable for what you didn't do. 
but they don't see it that way. They feel like everything should be handed to. I'm not sure if this generation or if it happened years ago, but when I grew up, man, anything anybody got back then, man, was a blessing. Granted, you see, I think social media got something to do with that, where you got all these kind of kids across the country posting offers, whether they're real or fake, posting offers, and they feel like they're on the same kind of caliber that they're on and don't understand why they're not getting the same thing, but it blows my mind that they would turn down a full ride to walk home. That, like, blows my mind, bro. Like, I don't understand how you feel like you want to get in, in, in debt, basically get in debt. Yes, yes. That's to the, walk on and nothing's guaranteed. That's the reason. That is the reason. You said it right there. That is the reason why, the number one reason why a, a student athlete is, is above a lot of different things because you don't get in debt. You know, everybody else has student loans they got to pay off of when they get when they get out of school or whatever. But you don't get in debt unless yep. you go past those five years. So, like, that's that's a big thing. That pride thing is just, ah, uh, it's crazy. So you saying, so you, you, you almost said, like, half. So almost half of the people don't go to school because they don't get the school that they want. Yeah, I get a lot of that. Um, the guys that I have remaining, it's not because of their talent. It's because they're, they're either waiting for a Division One offer that's likely not to come. Because I can't say that it ain't going to happen. Because I did have a kid get a phone call last year about two weeks before the first game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And he was actually like, playing on the first, and, and the first game um, on ESPN. And that was a hell of a story. Yeah, but that don't happen. But we know once every blue moon, man. And uh, these kids are waiting. They waiting. They waiting. But uh, and they they still brushing off coaches. Just late in the process. So uh, I mean, all I can do is uh, you know hope for the better for them. But you know I just wish they would make a, a, a good decision, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's August. It's August, man. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of blame that on. I, I mean, you can blame it on the individual, but you can also blame it on the person that's around that individual. Whether it's a, it's a coach, yeah. whether whether it's a parent, stuff like that. You got to talk to that person way before this time and let them know because it's a, it's most, it's a lot of D two, D three schools. The academics is way better than a D one school. Like academics is off the charts compared to a D one school. But like uh, mm-hmm. people don't even talk about that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to, you know, be this person, that person. Then look at uh, uh, all the mid majors in basketball. Like all the mid major stars that that was in uh, that was in the NBA right now. They're balling. They they didn't go to you know that top D one school, that top tier school. It's just uh, true. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Pretty much, I try to educate as much as possible, especially on my social media with uh guys that came out of D three and D two and. D1 AA, uh, HBCUs, and I post those guys, you know, while they, they in the NFL, some that got drafted. You know, I just try to educate them and just show them, you know, it, it don't matter where you go, it's what you put what you put in your film, what you get out True. of it. They're gonna find you. If you're good, they're going to find you. And I, I, that just don't, that don't sit, that's not sitting in the shit's head. Not, some of them, you know, some of them get it, but it's still, it's still too many that don't. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, you can't tell me a year, like my wife from Alabama, you can't tell me a year that Alabama State didn't have somebody in the draft, man. Alabama State don't have somebody in that draft. Like, right. it, it's a different position every year, but it's they're going to have somebody in that draft. Like, it's 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 possible. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's not even possible. Yeah, we drafted the first round last year. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama State going to have somebody in that draft, man. That's what they do, you know. So, uh, we definitely, with this podcast, man, we hopefully we can get that message out. Hopefully we can get a lot, a lot more kids to, to listen to it. But uh, hopefully we can get that message out, man. Uh, I I know I had um, that kid from France was trying to contact you. Did you did he end up contacting you, the football player from France? A kid. You know what? I got a lot of international kids. It's possibility. It, it's a possibility that uh, he reached out to me. I had to go back and check. I got a lot of international kids from uh, London and uh, London mm-hmm. um, and a lot of kids from Canada. Yeah, they were telling me that the problems with those international kids were that they don't fall under uh, certain scholarship guidelines because they're not a, from America. That's what I've been hearing, but I'm right. not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I've had some that have had that kind of problem. I have one. I have one right now that's on scholarship right now at a HBC with a MEAC, and he's fine. So I guess it's, it's the individual situation. 
Okay, so so what what are some complaints that uh, coaches have been uh, been giving you about you know just the process and the things you do or, or something that can be done better to inform the parents and, and kids and stuff like that? Man, like I said, this, this happens so fast that it you know going from five kids to fifty is a big jump. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, you know when I, when I first started, what I had to do, I was almost at the point where I had to get because I, I didn't know anything about spreadsheets and database <laughs> and uh, I was doing all this man from pen and pad and notebook mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, you know I, I started getting these um, hits from uh, the Division 1 and FBS coaches to hey give me a list of your best defensive line and, mm-hmm. uh, and linebacker yes sir I was like oh hey you know I, I, I ain't have that in hand but I do got all the individuals, so I ain't know anything about the spreadsheet. You know, you can pop that in on the computer and get that done kind of quick on the spreadsheet. But I ain't know about the spreadsheet, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I had to do all this, all this manually through an email. This this took literally me. It took me about all night, man, to get this stuff done and get this stuff sent out to kids. The, the blessing that came out of it was every last one of those kids, not that particular school that I sent it off to. Mm-hmm. But I did send that list off to several schools. Every every kid on that list is in school right now. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah. That's good. But, you know what I'm saying, um, just trying to find, you know, talented kids across the country that still live under the radar. Now, I'm starting to get kids now that I don't even know why they hit me up. Because when I pop in their huddle, they're like, man, you a no-brainer. Why are you hitting me up? Mm. Coach, I don't got no options. <laughs> Man. I can't believe it, but I'm like, and you know, then uh, you get the information out, and you check back with them in two weeks, and they had this can be, they got options now, and that that that, that that's what gets me going, man, and keeps yeah. me going because you know a lot of people say, man, that, that stuff don't work, but man, I I'm a witness, man, this stuff is working, man. Yeah, I know, I know at least at least about ten kids that you helped out. So like uh, it, it definitely works, you know. Uh, do do you if you if you see a kid that doesn't have what it takes, how's that process? I'll be honest with them. Like say you <laughs> send me a, a a kid a film, and they just don't got it. it it's still places for them to play football, depending on the academic. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just being honest yeah. with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've gotten some kids and stuff like that. Okay. I've gotten some kids. Um, I'll tell them straight up what I think that they can do, and some are, some will cuss you out and hang up and block. <laughs> <laughs> you said <laughs> you said and block you. <laughs> oh yeah, block you. They've done, but some um some um you know have been 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 you know they they took it the way they were supposed to take it, and some um um you know actually in school they, they may not be playing like starting. Mm-hmm. But they're on the team and they're, they're making good grades. They're, they're on the path to graduate, so that's that's most important. Right, man. That's that's awesome. All right, all right, coach. I want one question for you. You know, I, I know you said that you talked most of the kids, and you know they have their own different positions or whatever what they think they're good enough to do. Um, yeah. Do you actually? Do you actually? I, I know it could be more than what you need to do. But uh, do you actually contact parents as well? If they want to say, hey, man, talk to my dad about that or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or do you, like, when they call, like, dry calls, where you, you know, do things like that? I, I, I love to talk with the parents, actually, because I get to, you know, hear from them. Get to hear they, they try to, you know, what, you know, what they think about it or, or what's going on on there. Because, you know, sometimes the kids don't tell you everything. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. I like I, I I like to talk to the kids and see where they at and what they're comfortable with. Um, I mean, I'll know beforehand if, if a school called me in San, in North Dakota, are you going to be okay with your kids going to North Dakota? You know, I ask these kind of questions um, because sometimes it, you may you may have a kid that get one scholarship also and it's it's, it's way in Seattle, Washington, so it's happening. So you know, I just I, I like to talk with them and get their get their input, and I like to get to know these these kids' parents. I think it's important. Do do high school coaches reach out to you? Yes, they do. Actually, 
college coaches and high school coaches are among that's pretty much who all follow me along with the uh, athletes across the country. But um, all the time, man, and that's where that's who who makes me look good, man. These coaches uh, from from small towns, they have a ton. They have sent them to me. You know, nobody's really seen them, mm-hmm. and I'm they making it easy on me, man. Sending me these big six 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 six, six kids who bitched the world got got a four point oh GPA. I'm like, really, man. Easy man, work. It easy just work. Make my job easy. Yes, that's easy work, man. <laughs> easy work. And, and you telling me nobody knew about this kid? And this happens, man. Kids get overlooked all the time, and I didn't know it. This it was that this this capacity until I, I got rolling on Twitter like this. Okay. Okay. So you you say, so you say hold on. No, go ahead. You say you say kids get overlooked over time all the time. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Because you get kids. I get kids out of these towns that uh, aren't heavily recruited. I didn't know. Like, I, I got some, some people in small parts of Texas, um, like uh, Midland, Texas, um, El Paso, Texas, places like this. They'll see me filming their kids. And I, I wanna, I, I'm like, oh, what did they do? Did they rob a stove? <laughs> this kid got everything, you know, they're looking for and they're like, no, coach, I mean, we don't get too many coaches come to our games. But, you know, you got Huddle out here. So, you know, everybody's looking at Huddle, but you still get some kids that get overlooked these days. Man. You still get under the radar. Yeah, you, you, you find out. Yeah, people always say, you know, you ball out there, fine. You, I mean, yeah, it's a big it's a big United States out there, man. You know, like you said, them small yeah, times. That's only – that's only – that's only true in college that if you ball out there, find you, right? <laughs> in high school, it may not be the same, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I had a, a case, man, a kid contacted me, and uh, this was about December, you know, Feb- um, February signing day, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was, that was about December. The kid was asking me about Juco. And, um, uh, the kids got a legit laser time, 4.39. Um, his GPA was qualifying. His test score was qualifying. And uh, I'm like, JUCO? I mean, I understand that. You know, it's, it's, there's some great athletes in JUCO, but I was like, you qualify. But long story short, man, um, they got the kids. We got the kids film circulating. That kid signed for the Pac-10, Pac-12 team. On, on Saturday, with no other offer. Hey, that's it. Yeah, what's up? That's what's up. That is what's up. Mm-hmm. That is what's up. Yeah, I, do, I mean, I do want to go uh, back just for a second. You said something that I really do have to touch on. <clears throat> All right, so if you are a kid, I had this happen on a couple different occasions, probably like two. So if you are a kid mm-hmm. and you do get in trouble at a school, you know. No one's perfect. Everybody gets in trouble. All right. <clears throat> Make sure the people, the adults and the people you talk to, that next coach, uh, you yeah. or me or whatever, you tell them everything. Because what's happening is kids are yeah. talking to other they, – right, they, the they get kicked out of one school. They go talk to another coach, and they don't tell them everything. Mm-hmm. And what they got to realize, they gonna, that coach is going to say, okay, did you tell them everything? And you say, yeah, I did. He's going to call the coach that you left, and he's going to tell him everything. And once you do that, you lose your chances to go to that school. So I had that happen with two two different oh. kids. That, had, that happened a lot. Cause you ever had that yeah. happen? Yeah, yeah, and that's that's pretty big, man. And, and once they find out that you know they, they can't trust the kid, they, they they're going to move on from them. But I've seen that a couple of times. Yeah, so you you have to tell the coach everything. You, you have to. That's the only way you're gonna get a clear, you go a clear conscience and a clear shot and, a, and, a, and another team because these coaches talk to each other, man. They not they jobs on the line with this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know they want to know why you transfer. They want to know the reason. You know these kids get into stuff all the time. They are gonna contact that that coach. They're gonna contact that coach or somebody around that program that know what happened. And if, if it, that, that story don't match. That opportunity is 
Mm. Good. So did you, uh, have you got any kids too, last chance you? So any of those schools? The one in Mississippi? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I have, um, I got at least seven kids that mm. set it up. Yeah, oh, that's awesome, man. That's an awesome opportunity. Seven? Yeah, about seven. And you, we got uh, one or two from, from the Jacksonville area. That's good. That's good. That's a great opportunity for them. Great opportunity. From what I'm hearing, it's not going to be at that same school no more, from what I'm hearing. I, I'm guessing, but I'm not sure. I didn't, like I said, I haven't watched it. I probably watched the first episode tonight. But, uh. Yeah, they, they haven't, um, they haven't, um, announced it yet, but they're, they're probably looking for, probably looking for something else. I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they usually stay at what, two years and then move? And then move on, move on to the next one. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they yeah they, they'll probably move somewhere. Yeah, yeah, but it's just it's great that they're giving that insight to to what kids go through. A lot of kids want them to, want to see them do a, a basketball version of that. So uh, you also do track and field. What what other sports you do? I do track and field, but I, I it's, the football has gotten so big that it, it's no way that I can really do that right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty much concentrating on football. I've only had two track and field athletes go to school. Um, and one did real well, but uh, I've only had two two track and field kids. I do have the ability to get track and field kids out, but you know, with track, you know, it's about your time. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, we, we yeah, had a whole about episode about that. Yeah, yeah, it's about that time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got informed. Yeah, about it. yeah. So if I can't tell a coach he gonna get. It. You got to have it. He's a. <laughs> You got to have your time and all that ready. So, I mean, I can help with track, but I don't prefer. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with football for a little bit. Man. That's awesome. So, when, when, would you, when would you like kids to to contact you? Like, like when when is that's I, a good question, Randy? It's not. It's not like you gonna ask that same know, thing. Yeah. When would you like? Like, I mean, yeah. on, a, on a perfect situation, you know, when would you like kids to kind of reach out to you? Yeah, when in the process? Yeah, when in their process? Like when it went? Like oh, as early. Second. Yeah, yeah, as early as, as uh, possible. Um, like I said, this is my first year doing. Like I, I'm getting, I'm getting uh, the 2023-2022 kids, and I'm, I'm starting to get their information now. Because what I'm doing now is putting together a database with, you know, who I think is a uh, great athlete. And putting it all together, and all this stuff is going to go out there as many times as possible. So you're trying to get something like a like a two four seven ish type thing. Yeah, um, just not not. I guess you can say that. I, mean, I never looked at it that way. Yeah, but, um, I mean they do need other other outlets yeah. to go to other than two four seven. Yeah. So, so that's, that's yeah cool. yeah. Actually, we do four seven and, and uh, rivals. Okay. okay. But yeah, pretty, pretty much what, what what's going on, man. You, you have um, colleges that are, are looking for information on, on as many players as possible, but not just any players. They're, they're looking for the best players in the country by all means. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think what I'm doing and getting these guys because I'm getting hit up by guys, man. Who who are outstanding athletes? And they probably don't need my assistance. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, so what I'm doing is I'm just get, getting that information, getting it down. Because what I'm getting now, I'm, I'm getting coaches who want to expand their recruiting areas. I'm getting coaches, and this is not just one or two coaches. I'm getting a number of coaches who who they want everything. They they want every player that I got. So send me everything you got. Okay. So, um, I'm just getting, as many, yeah, just getting uh, as many players that I know of. Right now, I have my database 550 kids, and that's 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. And I just started this with this company a month ago. So, yeah, that's, that's what kind of work that's been going on. It's just me right now. 
Mm. Yeah, it sounds like it's gonna need a little bit more than just you if you keep on going. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You got one, Frank? Nah, man. I'm soaking up things right now, man. Everything ain't got nothing going on right now. I think he answered major questions I need to know and parents need to know, which is, you know, keep your parents involved in everything that you're doing. One. Also, uh, you know, besides keeping your parents involved, I think that you gotta, you know, you know, be honest with yourself. I know we all got dreams and not saying you can't get there, but there's no there. There could be extra steps to take to get there. If you're going to Juco, get there, then it's what it is. It's whatever. And I think last time you, last time you actually helps out this narrative, um, because, you know, you go, you see boys on TV there. And they actually go to colleges and actually show up and do good there, you know? So there's no, that yeah, going to Power 5 D1 may not be initially in the, in the, in the, in the options for you right now, but it could be grades or whatever else. But in the same sense, man, it's not over. You know, Coach Tank, man, you know it's not over. You still you got options after everything goes down with high school, you know what I'm saying? We all make mistakes, so you got options still. Just, you know, get around the right people. And you'll find out the best situations for you. You know what I'm saying? So, so coach, tell us, tell these guys where uh, they can reach you at. You can reach me on Twitter. It's at Big Tank TV, and um, check out GoldenEyeScouts.com if you got an athlete or a prospect um, that you think I need to know about. Go out and fill out a free evaluation form. Get that to me, and. Um, I have a Golden Eye Scouts Facebook, this Golden Eye Scouts um, key name, and um, that's pretty much it, man. That's awesome, man. Well, last, last but not least, like, give us something uh, for the parents and kids, man, and you know, for Jacksonville. This is the last thing you want, kind of want to say to them. Man, I, all of this that I'm doing is it, it, it really what I wanted to do was put a spotlight on Jacksonville, Florida. Um, you know, we we got great talent. Mm-hmm. We got, but we have too many, too many kids that can still be um, living out their dream while going to school, getting a free education. And we we got too many kids that don't don't know how or uh, are not doing it, and just just not playing out the high school. And you know that it's, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to eliminate as many of those as possible, man. And you give me a chance, man. I can help you get there. You. you 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 an athlete. You got what it takes to play college ball. Um, I definitely can can help you fulfill your dream man, and educate you about this process and help you um, become a better person. But uh, pretty much, I did all of this man. What I'm doing now um, with showcasing players from across the country is because when I put that kid up from just, when I put that that guy up from from Houston, Texas, that got all these all. They're going to ask me, who else you got? That next kid going to be from Jacksonville, Florida. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. I hear you. Hey, one last thing I want to say is that don't let the education system fool you, meaning this. So the minimum to play in high school is something like, I guess it's like 2.0 or something like that. But remember, yeah. that's not what you can get in a uh, college with. So starting out on the ninth grade is when they when they get us. Like in the ninth grade is, is when we make all the mistakes. Because I said this on a, a last podcast, yeah. on another podcast. When you make an F, you got to make two A's to make up for that F. So ninth, yep. ninth grade is killing us. Ninth grade is killing us. The preparation in ninth grade, ninth grade, and even tenth grade. You know, if you get an F, ninth, tenth grade, going into the um, to the to the eleventh grade, you're probably going JUCO. Ain't no problem. You going JUCO because it's hard to catch up with that stuff. Yeah. Yes, you can take makeup classes in the mm-hmm. summer and stuff like that. I don't know if a lot of parents know that, but you can take makeup classes in the summer. But yeah. I think that the education system should make both of them the same tier. You know, whatever the minimum required is to be yeah. in college, you should have had that minimum requirement to play in football. Because uh, cause regardless, if you don't have the minimum requirement, you might don't need to be playing football. Maybe. I mean, that's just my opinion. But, uh, <laughs> but, don't, but, but, don't, but don't let that, that, that get you, man. And, and know, know, know the requirements for college and, and, and Work hard because I see so many kids that right now are 18, 19, 21, 22 years old, and they upset at the school that they went to. They upset at the system. They upset at other kids 
because they didn't get to the place where they wanted to be at. But the but the, the laws and the, and everything is written for you right there when you're in the ninth grade, man. You know that's when things really 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 matter. You know that's when things are can, True. that's when the things really really matter. So like, go ahead, focus, man. Work hard. Know what the minimum requirements are, and uh, complete your dreams, man. Frank and Rob, man, go and take us out. Again, y'all, another 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 diamond that we giving the parents and kids to listen to. So you can get some education on your futures. This is not about right now. It's about years from now. So Coach Ty came through, gave us some good information, dropped some nuggets hey, that y'all should keep up and take. You know, but as always, man, we, we got y'all back. If you need anything, hit us up, DM us. Uh, follow us on podcasts and Facebook, even Instagram. Follow us so, and, and, and let us know if you have any questions or concerns about anything. We're here. Other than that, we want y'all to stay smooth, man. Real still, we out.